back to the Rick Smith Show. Now, here is Rick Smith. Welcome back here to Netroots Nation. We're at the David Lawrence Conference Center in Pittsburgh, as we've been talking about all day. One of the questions that keeps coming up is what makes a good candidate, you know, especially as, you know, November is coming around. And, you know, how do we save democracy? High-minded stuff. You know, how do we rebuild a prosperous working class? How do we rebuild the, the American dream? How do we do all that stuff? Well, my next guest, she's got the answers. That's why I've asked Stephanie Taylor to come talk with us. She's the co-founder of the Progressive Change Campaign Committee. You can check out their work at boldprogressives.org. Stephanie, thanks for sitting down with us. Thank you. Great to be here. So let's start with the uh, the the, can- the candidate thing. What makes a good candidate? What makes a good candidate? So we support candidates all over the country. We tend to support about a thousand candidates each cycle, school board to senate. And I will tell you the number one thing that people are looking for. They're looking for authenticity. They are looking for people who, deep in their gut are on the side of working people, not corporations, and people who get that the system is rigged and are willing to acknowledge that our institutions are failing us, our institutions are broken, and that they're gonna go in there and fight to do something about it. Yeah, I, having an actual agenda and it not being about the individual, sadly, I know a lot of people who get into the, running for something and it's about them. Yeah. And it really isn't about the individual. It's not you know, being the first this or that. It's about how are you going to make people's lives better? How are you going to make the lives of your constituents better, your community better? How are you going to change the world? Yeah. Your little piece of it at, at the start. Yep, that's right. We say a lot. We talk about the kitchen table test, which is when people are sitting at their kitchen table late at night, looking at a stack of bills in front of them. They're, they're worrying about what do I pay first this month? The heating bill? Do I pay off my credit card debt? You know, they're... Are you speaking to that? Are you letting them know that you get it, that you get that the pressures that working people are under in this country and you're gonna actually do something about it? Yeah, I'm with you. Now, we, we've hear, heard a lot, especially at this conference, about democracy and saving democracy, especially after the orange period in our country. There was a, that, that four year stint that seems to be bleeding over into the, the these last couple of years. How, how do we save democracy since it does appear? I mean, I look here in my state of Pennsylvania that uh, we've got a guy running for governor who I believe is a pure fascist and and, and would destroy democracy in this state. How do, how do we save this? Oh, yeah. I, I'm in Pennsylvania also, and I'm terrified about Mastriano. Um, but, yeah, we have to. Well, two things, I believe. We have to run more candidates who are, again, authentic, who are speaking to the worries of everyday Americans and who also are willing to say the institutions are broken and we're gonna fix them. We have too many Democrats that defend institutions that are saying, you know, everything's working fine. We just have to we just have to keep going the way we're going. No, the institutions are broken. The Supreme Court is broken. Electoral College, broken system. The Senate is broken. Let's get people in there that are willing to take these on to fix them and and really take on the corporate capture of our democracy. But number two, we have to be prepared that there are people who are running for office right now. You know, you brought up Mastriano. Um, There's people all over the country running for governor, running for secretary of state. These people are existential threats to democracy. And we have to be prepared in 2024 to really fight to make sure that we still have a democracy. But what do you say to the people? You know, look, you know, this is democracy. There are folks who are running on a platform of destroying democracy. And (laughs) and there are people who say, no, we don't want this. We want, you know, whatever, you know, authoritarian kind of fascist rule that they would bring us. What do you say to that argument? Well, you know, when you're overthrowing election results, that's anti-democratic, right? <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, we're one of the things we believe very much is that, for instance, we need to expand the Supreme Court yeah. because because we. Do you are, think that's possible? Well, it should be. Okay. I mean, we we should do it, and and there's a couple really good bills out there. One, I would ask people to check out Ro Khanna's bill on term limits for Supreme Court judges because I think it's a really nice solution to how you deal with the fact that you have a bunch of folks who have lifetime appointments and who are on the Supreme Court and have decided that they're basically an unelected tribunal that gets to decide for the rest of us what what laws we're going to live under. And that's not how it works. And so So on the expand the court problem, here's my problem with the expand the court argument. Uh, I know the other side eventually will come back to power. What stops them from expanding it to swing things back to the other? And we end up swinging back and forth in this 
this kind of electoral fashion? What would stop that until eventually we end up with a thousand justices? And so be it. <laughs> no, no, I'm kidding. But no, but, no, seri- but, no, but no, seriously, that would be democracy, but seriously I guess. here's the problem is that a lot of times that's an argument you hear from Democrats a lot of times. Well, well, if we do this, if we get rid of the filibuster, if we expand the court, if we use our power, what's going to stop the Republicans from doing the same thing? The thing is, they already run roughshod over our institutions. They already do whatever they want. They already don't respect norms when they have power. When McConnell gets power again and he wants to do something that he can't do, do you think he's going to keep the filibuster for one minute? Nope. You know, and so and so I think it's just the answer is just you can't you can't worry about what the other guys are going to do because they're going to do whatever they want. Yeah, and right now anyway. we have to worry about how do we wrestle back a Supreme Court that is sort of announced to the world with the Dobbs decision. We don't care what the majority wants. We don't care. We're just going to say how it's going to be. And the rest of you are going to have to live with it. You yeah. know, 70 percent of Americans don't agree with the Dobbs decision. The vast majority of people in this country want to see legal abortion, but yet we have a Supreme Court that's that's ruling otherwise. Yeah, our our, our, mm-hmm. our six in robes, uh, they know better. Right. And right. that's scary. And, and look, there are a lot of other things. Whether you know you're talking about women's rights, you're talking about workers' rights, you're talking about consumer rights, you're talking you know just basic citizens' rights. All of that because of this court under attack. And I, from a labor perspective, I'm very concerned mm-hmm. what the future has to hold. And I know you as a former union organizer, uh, I'm sure you see it as well. The, the things that they're going to do are going to return us back to the, the days of the Lochner era. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that they are a profoundly pro-corporate anti-worker court. And uh, we should all be really scared about it. And we were just talking before the interview about how we need to rebuild the labor movement in this country. And that requires... You know, laws that allow us to do that. So how, how do we begin outside of going to boldprogressives.org and becoming involved in, in the work that you do? And you're listening to The Rick Smith Show. We're with Stephanie Taylor. She's the co-founder of the Progressive Change Campaign Committee, boldprogressives.org, their website, if you want to check that out. Outside of going to that website, what, what do you want people doing? Exactly. You can come to the website. You can uh, volunteer for local candidates, volunteer for great local candidates, uh, chip in for local candidates, um, get involved uh, supporting great local candidates, but also if you feel driven, if you feel the calling, running for office yourself. We should be contesting every election everywhere, and you need folks that are able to speak to regular people and get their lived reality, get what it is to be a working person in this country, staring at that stack of bills on your kitchen table late at night and willing to say, I'm gonna go in there, I'm gonna fight to do something about it, I'm gonna fight to level this playing field. If you feel like that, you're, you're that kind of person, run for office. And, and being able to speak is an important thing. Yep. Uh, yeah. Something I struggle with quite often. But Stephanie, I appreciate you taking time for us. Hope folks will go to boldprogressives.org and check out the work you do and participate. Thank you so much. Good stuff, Stephanie. It's Stephanie Taylor, co-founder of the Progressive Change Campaign Committee. Make sure you check out their website, boldprogressives.org. We'll get links out on social media how you can take a look at that. Going to take a quick break right back after this. Stick around. You're listening to The Rick Smith Show. We're working people of the talk. Waving the flag of freedom for people, not corporations. Rick Smith.